Yes, it's real. 800 horsepower, 200 miles per hour, in a minivan, plus there's room in the back for your wife's boyfriend. This is exactly what happens when you take a Renault Espace and a Formula One car and combine them. But how the hell did this bad boy come about? And why the hell don't all of us drive them? Well, to find out, we're gonna have to go take a look at the hot and sweaty conception of the Renault Espace. You see, there was a time before minivans even existed. I mean, you don't get works of art like this without a little French delusion. So in the early 80s, Renault came up with this new radical design for a car. It was a completely different way of thinking about what a car could be, and it no longer served just one purpose. The seating had advanced state-of-the-art picnic technology, which allowed you to switch the seats around so you could make the inside of the car into like a little living room or picnic area. The best use for this though is that you can now swivel around the passenger seat while driving and beat your children while on the move. It could also seat seven passengers and amazingly, you could remove the back like two rows of seats and then it would have more room for cargo. Maybe that sounds a bit familiar. But at the time, this was a completely novel idea. Everyone was driving regular cars like sedans and station wagons. They didn't do fancy stuff like this. And Renault realized that they were onto something brilliant. Now you would think that something so new and innovative would have everyone just fighting each other to buy one. Well, in the first month alone, after launching in 1984, worldwide, they had a tremendous nine sales. But after that, well, journalists liked it and people realized it was freaking amazing. And I uh, really caught on after that, you can see, because the minivan has dominated the auto industry for the last, like, three decades, and basically, all of these cars are just rip-offs of the Renault Espace. And that brings us back to this car, because in 1994, Renault were crushing it. They had more money than they knew what to do with, so they were buying more cheese, baguettes, and frog legs than they could ever eat in a lifetime of being a French person. Now, on top of this, Renault had been making engines for the Williams F1 team, who were dominating. They won the Constructors' Championship in 1992, 1993, and 1994. And so I'm assuming that while staring at the Eiffel Tower and listening to an accordion and smoking a cigarette, a French man from Renault thought of this genius way to celebrate their accomplishments. And that's to take the Renault Espace and the Williams F1 engine and combine them. But this wasn't some slapdash French engineering. No, this was a seriously well-built car, okay? They started out by taking out the rear end transmission and the 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V10 from the F1 car, which had been dominating the competition at the time. But this engine was only making 700 horsepower in the F1 car. So what did they do? Well, of course, they tuned it up to make 800 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. And then they made the entire car out of carbon fiber, okay? The chassis, the body panels, even the dashboard were all made of carbon fiber to cut down on weight and increase rigidity. This all meant that it weighed less than 2,900 pounds, and then they added carbon ceramic brakes onto it so it could stop with the same G-force as an actual F1 car. The engine revved to 14,000 RPMs and sent power to just the rear wheels as it should. This meant it went from zero to 62 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, which is fast as shit. That's that's still fast as shit. That's literally faster than a Lamborghini Aventador. On top of this, this car could do almost 200 miles per hour in a minivan. <laughs> and with performance like this, you'd think the back of the car would be all full of scaffolding like a GT3 or something. But no, this car has back seats staying true to that minivan fashion. Yes, there's a screaming V10 in between them, but there they are, there's still seats. Just note that you do need to make sure you have good seat belts back there so your kid doesn't get sucked in the ITVs. But other than that, they are perfectly good rear seats. Now, with the performance and practicality that this car has, you'd think that putting it into production would be a no-brainer. But actually, it kind of turned out to be a yes-brainer. People were afraid that if they put their children in the back, then the engine would eat them, which is fair. And apparently, demand for the Espace had been declining, but I really doubt this. My theory is that Renault was too scared of the massive demand that this car would summon. I mean, obviously, it's going to put companies like Ferrari and Lamborghini out of business because it's so much more practical, and it's going to put companies like Honda and Toyota out of business because it's so much faster. It really is the perfect daily driver, but Renault never produced it because I guess they weren't ready for the demand. Now, apparently, Renault still used it as a safety car for a few F1 races, and it also generated a fair amount of publicity for their brand, 
but other than that, it wasn't really used for much. Now, since the Espace F1 was made, there was actually another car company that put an F1 engine into a road car, and that company is Mercedes. And I actually made a video about it where I talk about the struggles that they faced because it is a lot harder than it actually sounds. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you want to subscribe after that, or better yet, just wanna watch my future videos.